What if events went differently in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3? Well, welcome back my fellow watchers of the multiverse to yet another Marvel's What If video. And by the title, this isn't an ordinary video, fellow watchers. Today's episode covers an interactive what if, where you have the ability to choose your destiny through the multiverse with four alternate scenarios that will dive deep into new pathways throughout Spider-Man 3. Now, how this works, well, if you're new to the channel, the way interactive content works here is you will have the option to choose between four present scenarios, and through the description down below or a pinned comment, you will have a timestamp that will bring you to your destination. So that being said, let me know what you chose and why in the comments down below. But that being said, choose your destiny. Take it off. A. Venom turns back to the light. The timeline continues to play out the same as the original Spider-Man 3 timeline, with Venom gaining the upper hand on Spider-Man by tying his two hands to the debris in the construction site. Venom pulls Peter towards him as the two look at each other face to face. Venom slowly reveals himself to Peter as Eddie smiles and uses the metal pole's sharp edge to rip Peter's mask off. Peter slowly looks back up at Eddie and he continues to laugh at him. Eddie, the suit, you gotta take it off, Peter said, as Eddie continues to walk towards Spider-Man, pointing the sharp edge of the pole towards his neck. You, you would like that, wouldn't you? He said. Peter, at the mercy of Venom, begins to realize that his only way out of this is to talk Eddie down. Maybe by pulling a cord in Eddie's former self might somehow loosen the grip of the Venom symbiote. Peter begins to think as Eddie tightens his grip on the pole. It's my fault, Eddie, Peter said. I hurt you, Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy, and I let everyone down because of me. The suit's powers, they, they were amazing. I was able to move faster, save more lives, and do more things. But in the end, the costume took me over. It made me do all these horrible things. Not only to you, but to everyone around me, Peter said. I learned that with great power must also come great responsibility. Eddie's grip on the pole remained tight, but there was a substantial shift in his expression a flicker of recognition in his eyes. Peter pressed on, hoping to reach the humanity buried beneath the layers of the symbiote. I understand, Eddie. I know the power can be intoxicating, but it comes with a heavy burden. I have made mistakes, hurt people, and I can't change the past. But we can shape our future, Peter pleaded. As Peter spoke, memories of their shared history flashed before Eddie's eyes. Moments of friendship, the struggles that they faced together, and the bond that they once shared within the Daily Bugle. Peter took a step a little bit closer, trying to bridge the gap between them. I've been where you are, Eddie. I felt the rage, the desire for revenge. But letting the darkness consume us won't make things right. We can fight against it. We can be better. Peter urged his words, Carrying a genuine sincerity, Eddie hesitated. The struggle of the symbiote was evident on his face. 
The symbiote sensing the conflict seemed to pulse with uncertainty. Peter saw an opportunity and continued. You were a good person, Eddie. Before this, the suit may have changed you, but it doesn't define you. You have the strength to break free. The tension in the air was plausible as Eddie wrestled with the conflicting forces within him. Slowly, the sharp edge of the pole wavered and Peter saw a glimmer of doubt in Eddie's eyes. It's not too late, Eddie. We can find a way to separate you from the symbiote, to free you from its control. Please. Eddie slowly began to see now as he began looking around the building. He turned to his left side as Harry Osborne slowly hovered over the platform and touched down with his glider. Eddie looked back at Peter and back at Harry, who extended a hand. We can help you, Harry said. As Eddie realized that the suit was taking control of him, I don't know what to do, Eddie said. As he closed his eyes, the symbiote took back control of him and launched Eddie away from Peter, who was still tied up with the symbiote webs from above the construction site. Harry grabbed Eddie and pulled him aside as the symbiote attacked Peter. Peter, within a split second, ripped the symbiote webs and backflipped. Harry looked at Peter and was about to throw a pumpkin bomb towards it before Eddie stopped him. Eddie ran into the symbiote once more and fully embraced it. Eddie! Peter screamed as Eddie began transforming bigger into a larger version of Venom. But this Venom slowly got back up from the ground and looked at both Peter and Harry who were in a fighting position. I control the symbiote now, Eddie replied. You're right. The power. It feels good. But we won't lose ourselves this time, Venom said. We forgive you. Peter and Harry both looked at each other as a voice called out to them from behind. I don't want to fight you, Flint said, as he continued to walk past Peter, Harry, and now Venom. Sandman continued to walk, as he thought that Venom was still sided with him. But as Venom stayed with Peter and Harry, he soon realized that he was played. Eddie, let's finish them together, he called out. No, Venom said. Sandman heaved a heavy sign as he charged up his fist, punching Venom who was knocked back a few feet. Harry grabbed a pumpkin bomb and clicked the button. Sandman managed to wrap his arm around Harry, who then screamed in pain as he tried to warn Peter about it. Time seemed to have slowed down because Peter watched as the bomb continued to click in the air. And within a few seconds, it was too late as the construction site exploded into flames. Peter went flying across the site, smashing his back against the wall, while Sandman, who tried to leave the blast, was turned into glass. Venom was nowhere to be seen. Harry, the one who was closest to the blast, woke up as the symbiote had saved him. Peter ran towards Harry as he slowly extended his hand out. Venom was nowhere to be seen as Peter and Harry looked around at the chaos that unfolded. Harry smiled as MJ ran towards the two of them. Peter hugged MJ and looked straight ahead as Venom was staring at the three of them in the distance. The mask of Venom revealed Eddie's face, who had tears in his eyes. He looked at his hands and smiled as he swung away into the night, leaving Harry Peter and Mary Jane on top of the building. Peter smiled as he was able to save Eddie and show him that he had more to him than just the symbiote. He had a heart and soul, and the three of them grabbed each other's arms as they walked away through the sunset. Choice B. Venom kills Spider-Man. The Venom symbiote had fully taken over Eddie Brock, and he had Spider-Man right where he wanted him. The plan was going all too well. Peter tried to talk Eddie down by explaining that the Venom symbiote was taking control of him. The power was making Eddie lose his mind, 
and soon he was going to take revenge by killing Peter. Peter knew that this was the end of the line. He tried to look around, but he didn't see Harry or Mary Jane. It's time to die, Venom said, as Peter's heart nearly skipped a beat. He saw Harry zooming on his glider towards Venom. Venom backflipped and used a large symbiote tendril to knock Harry back. His face hit the metal platform with so much force that it was as if Harry could have died right then and there. Harry's body fell to the floor on top of the wooden boxes. Venom shot a web towards the glider and pointed the knives towards Peter and jumped. Harry slowly got up to look at Peter. Peter looked back at Harry as he smiled. Harry stopped himself as Venom launched the glider further into Peter. The blades went right through him, piercing Peter's heart. Peter! Harry screamed as Venom snarled at Harry by throwing the glider away. Harry took out his large knives from his gauntlets and the two of them jumped at each other. Harry continued to stab as the symbiote tried to launch Harry backwards. Harry fell towards the wall and was pinned. Venom continued to walk towards Harry. Osborne looked around and called for his glider. He jumped out of the way as the blades went directly towards Venom, pinning Venom towards the wall. He tried to break free, but Harry ran towards the glider and pressed on all of the bombs that were left within it and blew Venom up to bits. Harry fell to his knees as Venom was now dead and Peter was dead too. He ran towards Peter as he cut the symbiote tendrils holding him. Pete, no, he screamed as Harry's head went down. Peter's eyes slowly came back as he looked at Harry. He just smiled as he slowly turned his eyes and saw that MJ was there too. He reached out his hand as they touched. MJ, Harry, Peter said, as tears went down his eyes with a wide smile on his face. No, Harry screamed. He placed his head down as both MJ and Harry cried in each other's arms. As the body of Peter laid there. I didn't want this, a voice called out. Harry turned his head as both he and Mary Jane saw Flint Marco standing before them. I'm so sorry for all of this, Flint said. Harry slowly got up as Flint continued to talk to him. He explained to Harry that Peter's Uncle Ben was killed because of him, and that he wished he could have been forgiven for that act. But now his daughter was dying and he needed money. He went on to say that his friend had the money that day, and the gun was in his hand. He pulled the trigger and killed Peter's Uncle Ben. Harry was shocked by this revelation as he never really knew who the real killer was. I'm not asking you to forgive me, Flint said. You should have asked him yourself, Harry replied, as Flint looked at the body of Peter with tears streaming down his face. Police officers and SWAT team began coming up the stairs of the construction site. Harry looked at Mary Jane, offering his hand to come with him, but she wouldn't take it. She was going to stay with the body of Peter. Harry, on the other hand, got on his glider and fled the scene, while Flint Marco raised his hands up, giving in to the police. The city learned the truth that night about who Spider-Man was how Peter Parker got bit by a radioactive spider, and within this timeline, the new hero of New York would become Harry Osborn, the new goblin. Someone had to fill those shoes, and Harry knew that he would try his best to fight every day for what Spider-Man always believed in. Choice C. The symbiote chooses Peter again. Peter continued to walk through the empty construction site as he kept hearing voices, Venom screaming from a distance. He didn't know where it was coming from, but he knew it was closer to him than before. 
Peter's spider sense was cancelled out from the symbiote, so he had to act stealth in this timeline. And that is where everything went wrong for Peter Parker. It wasn't something that was his fault, but one action can cause ripple effects and spread like wildfire throughout the timeline. Peter hid behind a wall, trying to look for any signs of venom, and with a stroke of luck, Eddie was searching for him. Peter turned around quickly as his heart sank. Eddie didn't know that Peter had the upper hand, and it made Peter smile, as he could go in for a sneak attack. As Eddie was becoming more and more angry, he heard loud noises as, as Peter had dropped a pile of large metal pipes. Peter watched on as Venom reacted to the loud noises. This gave Peter a thought as a flash of the church incident went through his head. The symbiote was affected by loud noises. Peter tried again and it worked as Venom screamed out in pain. The symbiote began opening up as Eddie cried out in pain. Where are you? He yelled. And Peter replied, I'm right here. Peter screamed as he punched Eddie in the face. Venom flew backwards from the surprise attack as Peter continued to punch and punch. He had the advantage and this time he continued to use it as long as he could with a thunderous punch to the chest. Peter began ripping the symbiote off of him, but Peter's victory was short-lived as the symbiote began crawling up his arms again and his body. The symbiote had completely left Eddie's body, and now what was left was a fully consumed Peter Parker. Peter screamed and clawed at the symbiote, but it was no use. He dropped to his knees. As Sandman slowly came in, what's our plan? Osborne's dead. This set Peter off, as flashes of Harry flew through his mind. Dead, Peter said. Peter, now with the full powers of the symbiote, turned around to face Flint, who was shocked that it was not Eddie in the suit. Eddie was on the ground, unconscious. Peter then picked up his body by his neck with the Venom symbiote and murdered Eddie in front of Flint as he continued to scream and jump towards Sandman. Peter, now fully consumed, began punching Sandman, who tried to escape, but Peter used the symbiote to hold Sandman down. Harry flew in with his glider as he looked shocked to see the face of Peter through the symbiote. My god, Pete. It's too late for me, Harry. Please, you have to kill me. The symbiote took complete control of Peter's body and launched itself towards Harry. As Peter, now fully consumed by the symbiote, launched himself towards Harry. The atmosphere grew thick with dread. Harry dodged Peter's initial attack. Realizing the situation, the symbiote-enhanced Spider-Man was relentless, showcasing more enhanced strength and agility. Harry, realizing that he couldn't reason with his friend anymore, reluctantly prepared to defend himself and Mary Jane, the battle between Harry and the symbiote-infested Peter unfolded, and that even shocked the Sandman, as Harry laid on the ground, battered and defeated. Peter's voice distorted by the symbiote. It's too late, Harry. I'm beyond redemption. Please, you gotta end this. The skyline witnessed a moment of surreal horror as Harry, with a heavy heart, hurled a pumpkin bomb towards his best friend. The explosive device sailed through the air, leaving a trail of smoke and sparks. Time seemed to slow down as the bomb connected with Peter's body, engulfing him in a fiery explosion. The symbiote was weakened by the blast as Peter's charred body laid there, revealing the remnants of the once heroic Spider-Man. The city below, unaware of the tragic events, remained shrouded in the darkness of the night. Choice D no way home. Somewhere else, 
Peter Parker asked Doctor Strange to perform a spell to have everyone in the world forget that he was Spider-Man. But the spell was then botched, but in this timeline it sent more villains to his world than it should have. And that brought the wild card, Venom, from Peter 2's universe, where Eddie Brock was sent to this new world. He vanished in front of Peter Parker and Harry Osborn who were shocked to see that Venom was nowhere to be found. Harry cut the ropes to the symbiote as they were shocked at what happened. Meanwhile, somewhere else, an unexpected portal rippled into existence. Doctor Strange's mythical energies enveloped the scene, and from the swirling vortex emerged Venom, still bonded with Eddie Brock, who found himself transported through time and space. Confusion itched across Eddie's face as he scanned his surroundings. The symbiote, sensing the unfamiliar energies, reconciled as if resisting the influence of the Dark Timeline. Before Eddie could comprehend the situation, Doctor Strange, standing at the portal's threshold, assessed the scene. Looks like we got an unexpected visitor from another reality, Strange remarked, eyeing Venom with a mix of curiosity on his face. Eddie, still grappling with the remnants of the symbiote, felt a strange sensation, as if a weight had been lifted. The energies from the portal seemed to have purifying effects weakening the symbiote's hold on Eddie as tendrils of the darkness slithered away. Eddie began to regain control of himself. Where, where am I? Eddie questioned, bewildered but relieved to feel the absence of the symbiote's hold. Strange explained the situation detailing the accidental crossover of timelines and the potential repercussions it could have on the multiverse. Realizing the danger Venom posed, not just in his world, but across realities, Strange offered a solution. We need to sever the connection between you and the symbiote, Eddie, Strange explained. It's the only way to prevent further disruptions. Eddie, understanding the gravity of the situation, agreed to Strange's plan. As he saw a different version of Spider-Man in the background, who was talking to different villains. Eddie didn't know what was going on, but he realized that he needed to end this now, and Strange ended up doing a process as the symbiote separated from him. A surge of dark energy filled the room, swirling into the vortex. The symbiote, now an isolated entity, struggled, struggled against the forces that held it captive. Strange with a stern expression casted the spell to imprison the symbiote in a containment field. With the symbiote neutralized, Eddie felt a profound sense of relief. He stood free from the alien influence that had plagued him for so long. Strange, satisfied with the outcome, prepared to send Eddie Brock back to his original timeline, where Peter interjected himself and told Eddie that if he wanted to help, he could, but Eddie knew that he had to go home. As Eddie passed through the closing portal, he felt a mix of gratitude and uncertainty. The symbiote now contained and cured, remained in Strange's custody, preventing further chaos in Eddie's world. Meanwhile, back in the original timeline, the repercussions of Venom's absence were beginning to unfold. The altered events in the absence of the symbiote created a ripple effect, changing the trajectory of Peter Parker's life in an unexpected way. As Eddie returned to his world, free from the symbiote's influence, he found himself facing a new beginning. The journey ahead would be one of redemption and self-discovery. As Eddie and Peter embarked on separate paths, shaped by the events that had transpired across the multiverse. And that is going to be the Marvel's What If interactive video on Spider-Man 3. Now, what did you think of these alternate timelines? What was your favorite timeline? I do want to say these are shorter stories and they're meant to be because it is a interactive video. Now, if you guys would like to see more interactive Marvel's content, 
Now, if you guys would like to see more interactive content on the channel, do make sure to let me know in the comments down below, as I want to continue doing interactive content full time for you on the channel. But again, these videos do take longer. But again, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. And, but, and do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. But thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and have a fantastic day. Peace out.